I've always had an affinity for older men. I mean like 20 to 30 years older than me. You're a grandfather? That's hot. I'm not sure where this proclivity comes from. I have a perfectly normal relationship with a perfectly normal father, so spare me your Psych 101 babble about daddy issues. And no, I'm not a gold digger in search of a sugar daddy to support me in a lifestyle to which I'll grow accustomed, although I wouldn't exactly object. I just think older guys are better, and here's why. First, if men mature slower than women, it would make sense for women to start with a man at least 10 years older than her, just as a baseline. That's just common sense, come on. Second, young men are always so intent on proving themselves and asserting their masculinity. <laughs> with, <laughs> with their saggy pants, douchebag, hey dude, you know that chick, misogynistic frat bro speak. You will never hear an older man talk like this. And finally, their parents are probably already dead. <laughs> Morbid, sure, but it also means no meeting overbearing mothers who think you're not good enough for their baby boy. It's like no meeting the parents ever? Sign me up. <clears throat> All these reasons led me to set my sights on an older man in my creative writing class at Maricosta College. Now when I say older, I do mean 32 years older to be exact. Allow me to backtrack slightly. This was in the fall of 2013 and it was a particularly depressing time for me. Two of my ex-boyfriends were getting married and I, meanwhile, was single, unemployed, and living at home with my parents in the wondrous marine plague city that is Oceanside. Oh, and I hadn't had sex in a really long time. <laughs> Besides, he had the look of a rugged football coach, yet wrote eloquent love poems bursting with sensitivity. It was a smoldering combination, and I wanted him bad. I suppose the responsible thing to do at that juncture in my life would have been to look for a job, an apartment, a meaningful relationship, but that's not really my style. <laughs> of all the things I needed, sex was clearly the most attainable. <laughs> I thought I'd start there. <clears throat> we previously only made small talk as classmates. We grabbed a quick bite together at Arby's before class once, but he only asked me for help with clues on a stupid crossword puzzle the whole time. So I knew he was clueless. I decided I would have to proposition him immediately. I had no time for banter, no time for social pleasantries, no time for dating and getting to know him. This was an emergency. <laughs> I approached him one Wednesday after class. So do you wanna do something this weekend, I asked? Why, you wanna to go to the zoo? <laughs> I adored his naivete. Something straight out of the pages of Penthouse Forum was about to happen to him, and he had no idea. <laughs> no, I don't want to go to the zoo. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wild animal park, he asked. No. What did you have in mind? I began to blush. Are you gonna make me say it, I asked. Say what? <laughs> I only wish I could tell you verbatim what exactly I came up with. Some variation of, do you wanna spend the night together? I only remember I never used the word sex or fucking, I am a lady after all. <laughs> Needless to say, I think he was pretty shocked. He told me later he thought I was joking, waiting for hidden cameras to jump out and reveal <laughs> he was on an episode of punk or that I wouldn't show up but he was hopeful enough to believe me and we set up a date for Saturday. Saturday came and I wasn't sure if I could go through with it. I kept thinking, what am I doing? Did I really tell this guy I was gonna come over to have sex with him? But if I had any balls, it was too late to back out now. I made some excuse to my parents because although I was 34 years old, I didn't think I'm off to seduce some old guy from writing class. <laughs> Sounded quite right. 
Elle... <rire> I drove over to his place in Oceana, a 55 plus retirement community, naturally. We made some idle chit chat before proceeding to the bedroom. We start to do it, and I don't know, because it's been a while for me, and I'm tense and nervous. Things aren't exactly going as planned. He reaches for my face and can tell in the dark that my brow is furrowed. What's wrong, he asks. What's wrong? Here I am trying to be a wanton sexual goddess, offering myself up on a silver platter, yet I'm so rusty that penetration proves impossible. Not exactly the image I was going for, and definitely not penthouse forum material. Anyway, he's very patient, and eventually, of course, it works, a little faster than I was anticipating. No form of birth control had been put into place thus far. So our first weekend together also involves a trip to the pharmacy section at Ralph's <laughs> to purchase the morning after pill, which is always a great first date anecdote. <laughs> Definitely one to tell the grandkids. <clears throat> Flash forward 12 months. Over the past year, my life has improved considerably. I moved out of my parents' house to the Normal Heights neighborhood of San Diego with a friend of mine. I found a job as a caregiver for the elderly. because I do love old people, right? <laughs> Which is not incredibly glamorous work, but I'm good at it and it pays the bills. I'm going to writing groups and open mics. I'm dancing around to Rihanna songs when no one is watching. I'm kicking ass and taking names and life is good. And yes, I'm still seeing my writing class, Lothario. We managed to make it a year as a couple with all that that entails. We had some, spectac oh, excuse me, some spectacular arguments he met the family. My parents were actually really cool with it. We eventually did get to both the zoo and the wild animal park. <laughs> we got better at sex. I discovered all the comedy gold that could be mine from dating someone 30 years your senior, like the time he gazed lovingly into my eyes and asked, where were you 20 years ago? <laughs> um, in the ninth grade. <laughs> or the time I texted him, are you DTF? Knowing full well he would have no idea what it meant. I'm surprised he can text. What? He responded. Come on, man, down to fuck, I replied. No, he said, I'm going to bed. <laughs> it was 8.30 p.m. <laughs> Eventually, he came to appreciate my vulgarity as well as my need to quote the movie Dirty Dancing constantly. <clears throat> In a lot of ways, he was wonderful for me. He wrote me beautiful poems that I will treasure until I am old, where he called my bodice supple and our lovemaking pure bliss. The first Sunday I stayed over, I told him I like to read the parade section of the newspaper and put ketchup on my eggs. And after that, every subsequent Sunday I was there, he already set out the parade section and the ketchup bottle by my plate. <laughs> Stupid shit like that, but shit that proves that he's paying attention. He made me feel beautiful and empowered at a time when little else did. But, and of course there's always a but. He would never refer to himself as my boyfriend. He preferred the term lover, which is really just a fancy word for fuck buddy. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves here. It's all we really had in common. At the beginning, I may have just been looking for a fuck, but after a while, I wanted a relationship. And he proved time and time again that he wasn't interested. He would never drive to San Diego to see me. I always had to go there. He balked at my idea of going on a sunset cruise for my birthday. It signified way too much of a commitment. 
There were so many red flags like this that I tried desperately to ignore because I wanted so badly for him to be the one. Despite these warnings, I was hesitant to leave. It's like I always said to him, quoting Baby from Dirty Dancing. <laughs> Me, I'm scared of everything. I'm scared of what I saw. I'm scared of what I did, who I am. And most of all, I'm scared of walking out of this room and never feeling the rest of my whole life the way I feel when I'm with you. I never cared about our age difference or about what anyone thought when they saw us together, but the gap did mean we were at very different places in our lives. I was still relatively young and looking for a partner. He had already done all that. In fact, he has been married three times, which is not exactly a ringing endorsement. And could you imagine... <laughs> could you imagine being someone's fourth wife, really? I decided that a solely sexual connection, coupled with his unwillingness to offer more, was no longer enough for me. He understood and we parted ways amicably. I do not regret propositioning him or any of the time we spent together. What breaks my heart is that where lust had turned to love for me, it had not for him. Not every love story ends with a happily ever after. I mean, do you really think Baby and Johnny Castle ever saw each other after that summer at Kellerman's? I know that a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle, and I know that he was not the sole reason for my happiness and recent good fortune. I'm not here to wax philosophical about fate and destiny and tell you that the stars aligned to put us in that class together. But I do think he came along at a time in my life when I needed him most. And that's why I'm telling you this story and why I dedicate it to him, my one night stand that lasted a year. Thank you. Thank you.